Hello, welcome to the artclasses.com. Today I am going to interview Mr. Jason Stowe. That's me and that's Stowe. Jason was the lead environmental artist for Guild Wars 2 and we have been working together since Guild War 1 and the previous company. Here are some of his work. Right now he's doing a bunch of environmental concepts so he's freelancing as an environmental concept artist nowadays and he also owns a school called Future Poly which uh, train artists and prep them before they start working in the video game industry and right now I'm just gonna show you some of his work and we're just gonna go right into the interview in a moment I'm Z Tiptara. So today we are going to interview Jason. For uh, he was a lead environment artist for Guild Wars 2, and he's been doing in the video game industry for over like 10, 15 years. I think. Yeah, about 14 years. A bunch of you guys keep asking me to interview like a bunch of professional who are in this field. So I'm trying to you know fulfill your request. Or how did you start this job? Where or what is the reason? What inspired you to do this? Mm -hmm. Well. You, you remember we both really wanted to do comic book illustration. Uh, at that time, kind of comic books were mm -hmm. the industry was slowing down a little bit, and like image, yeah, kind of, oh, yeah, a lot yeah. of the kids wanted to you know, spend their money on video games. That was emerging. I think we were like seven at that time. We were still young, <laughs> a little older, but yeah, it would just kind of seem like a, a natural career change. Yeah. I love video games as well, and in Seattle, it just happened to be a really booming industry. Mm -hmm. um, so that's, you know, we, after our first job, um, we were, were working on kids' games, uh, point and click kind of animation stuff. And it was really, really great experience. Uh, but that company went under eventually um, <laughs> after a few years. Deep pay. And uh, Zia uh, went, got a job at ArenaNet. And that's before the game, you know, the original Guild Wars was released. That was like 10 people. Yeah, it was really. Uh, really, you know, early on in development, um, but you know, I got got a job over there too, and uh, kind of started going down the route of environment art. And I never really gave much thought to the creation of video game like mm -hmm. environments. Mm -hmm. You know, you think about video games, and a lot of people want to do concept art yeah. or the characters, the main characters. But what what I eventually realized is you're you're looking at the screen, and pretty much ninety percent of what you're looking at is the environment. <laughs> and I think it's more versatile to like when, like, it's, if you do creature and character, it's limited for you to like jump off to add a yeah. character. But when you do like environment, you can do pretty much like movies, video games, set props, and yeah, yeah. So I kind of just slowly realized I love doing it, and I the individual assets like creating a rock or creating grass or a building or a tree. Mm -hmm. That, that was fine, that was fun, but what I really loved was putting it all together and using like a, a map editor or using a game engine to com comprise a whole scene. Yeah. And if you think about it, it's a really unique uh, a media medium because you can actually explore your own artwork mm -hmm. virtually and it's totally new. It's a yeah. new thing. And now like the stuff that we, you were doing like in the past uh, six months that I saw like with Cry Crytek and all that, mm -hmm. uh, it's pretty amazing too. And you just went to the what? Uh, GDC? Yeah, we just went to GDC. Uh, I was that? Tell the kids what GDC is. Uh, GDC is Game Developer Conference and uh, Crytek, the company that uh, produces CryEngine and Crisis and you know, awesome. they started with uh, Far Cry a long time ago, but they invited me to come down because I've been using CryEngine for my uh, online on my online game class. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, he also the owner of the Fusion Poly, so he have like a, a live class in location with a school two location in Seattle and Bellevue. So and they have like a bunch of new people instructed and stuff. So mm -hmm. how long have you been doing that for? Yeah. So after after ArenaNet, I was there for nine years, and I was kind of. Uh, I was doing some some teaching on the side, uh, and I realized I, it was just such a fun experience and kind of releasing all those weird secrets and <laughs> tips that you build know. up, all the technical stuff. I know because no one else wants to hear about it, but if you find yeah. if you find students that are eager to learn, it feels really good to That's share. With and them. also, like when you're in the production or in the pre-production stuff, 
you can't even post and you can't even show any. Yeah. And by the time you show people what it's, it's like, it's already like, it's already been done. Like, oh, the the technology went uh -huh. further than that. And you have to like keep keeping up with the technology. You just sort of have to. Oh man, I have to like redo that thing again. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. So I started uh, Future Poly for that um, because I, I realized I enjoyed teaching, but I didn't. I, there weren't any uh, schools that I, in the area that really focused on just the portfolio. Mm -hmm. So I I thought. You know, if you had a small school that was really affordable, and all the instructors are working professionals, yeah, um, and you just focus on a portfolio, yeah. then you, you don't have to spend like a hundred grand on a tuition. You can yeah. you true. can just learn the meat, and you don't have to take a bunch of supplemental, you mm -hmm. know, weird, <laughs> yeah. class, weird yeah. classes that are just there to bloat the yeah. curriculum. You know, yeah, just and don't have to like spend more on what you don't need. Yeah, and it's worked well, but you know, it's still extremely competitive. I don't want people to. You know, just assume they come here and get a job. You know, I, I feel like we've placed uh, some of the top positions in the area. We placed people mm -hmm. at Arena Net, Bungie, and mm -hmm. Sucker Punch, uh, a lot of the huge like AAA yeah. studios here. But it's still really difficult. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I, I'm yeah. I'm really confident that we're this school and a lot of professionals will agree. You know, we're providing the most cutting edge yeah. education yes. because a lot of students. You literally, so. we have instructors from Bungie. You can sit there and. Even if the class was no curriculum and you could just ask whatever question you wanted, that would be an extreme value. Yep. And then in addition to that, we do have a structured curriculum, and mm -hmm. um, I, you know, it's. I basically wish it was available for yeah. when, me when, when you were <laughs> younger. <laughs> but I mean, learning on a job is pretty good. Too. We got pretty lucky because, like, and back then there wasn't there wasn't a lot requirement because they only required your raw skill, like you know, yeah. you, you're good, like uh -huh. drawer and you're good, good craftsmanship. And you can do a little bit of things here and there, and you could. Yeah, I remember you doing like the earlier 3D back then for uh, Treasure Planet. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Turning ships. <laughs> that was like 10, oh shit, that's gotta be longer than 10 years. Yeah. Wow. Like, I see those now. I know. Those are like advanced stuff. Yeah, you can find those in Walmart, I think. Piglet, uh, <laughs> Winnie the Pooh. <laughs> yeah. And uh, what? And uh, Treasure was, Planet, uh, a bunch of stuff, yeah. Yeah, that was part of the reason. Um, I talk about this a lot with my students, and it's it's worth taking a minute and thinking about your dream job and yeah. and just building a whole portfolio towards that. Because in you know my our experience kind of shows that if you don't really think about it much, like we ended up working like kids games and doing one of the food stuff. <laughs> if that and, company didn't go down, we probably end up staying there forever and not yeah. even go to a really. But yeah, yeah. It, you know it. it but if, if I had a more structured portfolio back then, maybe I would have just gone and, uh, you know, yeah. kind of cut a few years off of my career. Yeah. I'm not one to admit, have regrets, though, just, but just, uh, you know, to depart any wisdom to people getting yeah. into it. And if you want to work on Assassin's Creed, then make it. A yeah, whole make, Assassin's make it there. Environment. Yeah, just make your portfolio and go to that. We got yeah. pretty lucky, though, too. Like, Daniel Doshu and a bunch of people that we... Like we grow from those people. Like we just a, a bunch of punks back then. You, me, Rich, uh, K Kai. But K Kai was already kind of good back then. But then, uh, like we got a bunch of super good people on, and we like we learned a lot from those guys. So yeah. like we, it's not <clears throat> typical that you were like going to a studio that has like Fang was there, um, mm -hmm. uh, Kevin Chen, a bunch of people was there too. Oh, yeah, like they a, yeah, they were there like way early in the uh, Guild War One. So not many people. Get lucky enough to go to the studio and meet people with that high caliber. Yeah. At the same um, time. Jamie yeah, Jones. I mean, yeah, we we definitely got lucky. In it. Yeah, we did got lucky because you yeah, can end up with a lot of yeah, yeah friends that you know went different routes or different studios yeah. and didn't have as much of a learning atmosphere. Yeah. yeah. And they kind of were more stagnant. I know. Because um, like I think Arena like we they're trying to like recruit like just the top knot. If you're not cutting it, then they're not gonna. Mm -hmm. And some companies like that like. Ubisoft and all that. Yeah. So, um, what would you recommend uh, the kid who just want to start, like, and they don't know, like, say, some kid wants to do comic book or some kid wants to do game, or what? What would you like tell them how to get that foot in the door or how to, you know, get easy start? Yeah. Um, well, specifically, is is getting into gaming. Uh, environment art is one of the areas that has the largest. Uh, you know, openings and available positions, just because mm -hmm. the teams are 
uh, just uh, percentage-wise, you have more environment artists and character artists and mm -hmm. concept artists. Mm -hmm. So that uh, the odds are better. It's easier to get your foot in the door. And what I would say is just really uh, spend yeah. some time built like gathering reference of all your favorite screenshots and really try to figure out everything they're doing. Um, you know, if you're playing a game, just be walking around, looking up, looking up close at all the textures and. Uh, the hardest thing students have is, is realizing where they stand in the skill, mm -hmm. in the skill tree. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and, and some people don't have a good judgment of, of, of like how good they are compared to the other yeah, ones. Yeah, that's, so that's the hardest thing. Um, what, what I recommend is, um, well, at, at the Future Poly YouTube, we have a bunch of free yeah, intro tutorial. tutorials, so you can just watch those, similar to what Zia yeah. has on his Go there YouTube. for uh, Future Poly YouTube, I'll have a link up here somewhere. It, it's probably going to be out, yeah. Um, so you can start there and then um, really just focus on the company you want to work at. If okay. you want to do Halo, look at all the 343s, you know, the, the artists usually post a lot of work in progress stuff or on their, you can track down the artists that mm -hmm. worked on it and you can find their blogs and you can find concept art and try to recreate stuff. And you also have the finished game that's released so you can compare the two and see, okay, that's what their concept art looks like, this is how they translated it. And you should be able to connect the dots and figure out exactly yeah. how to how to recreate that pipeline. Yeah. Or you can like go to you know their website and or look at their production team pick up a few names that under the production team, like yeah. say, you know, the, the entry level artist, they're probably in there after the CD, usually they have the name or, the, mm -hmm. or their wiki or something, right? Yeah. And then look at their portfolio. A little bit of yeah. detective work, you should be able to find it. Yeah. The, um, and, you know, some of the, like, well, I guess even high level, like art directors, mm -hmm. if, you, if you somehow find their contact or find their stuff on CG Hub and you email them, a lot of times you'll get a response, you know, yeah, uh, if you're just kind of respectful and um, you just, if you keep your kind of, yeah. email Daniel message, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Daniel, like, keep it concise and, you know, <laughs> you'd be surprised yeah. what kind of responses you yeah. get. Or email for you, he's the art director now, Sucker Punch. Yeah. Oh, new Sucker Punch game, just put a plug for him, yeah. and uh, whatever, what is it called, the uh, Second Son? Yeah, Second Son, the new Sucker Punch game just came out, yeah. and we actually had probably eight, eight or seven or eight Future Poly students worked on that game. Oh, so, awesome! Yeah, uh, the art director at Sucker Punch is Horia Dochu. He worked with us yeah. for a long time at ArenaNet, and he's and also he's also teach at your school. Yeah, he he's a, teaches some of the uh, concept art classes. Yeah, um, and he's been a really big uh, part of Future Poly from the very beginning. Yeah, so let's check it out. Kind of believed in the the program, so I owe him a lot for sure. What do you say? Like, what inspired you the most from since the beginning, and then throughout the process that you become a stronger uh, environmental concept, and then like what process? Like early on when you were like, oh, just starting out, and then how how do you grow as mm -hmm. an artist? Like, if you like grow, how do you get better? Yeah. How do you you know? Um, I, th I think there's <clears throat> a level of friendly competition you need, and usually, I, since we were surrounded by such amazing people at Arena, uh, it was mostly my peers that were inspiring me. If I saw, you know, someone just make an awesome mm -hmm. building or something, and I didn't know a certain technique, I'd, I would, I'd want to do better. Mm -hmm. I'd want to match that, but I'd also be, Definitely. you know, these are my friends around me, so yeah. you, you'd be like, oh wow, that's amazing. Yeah. How did you do that? So a little flattery, like flattery, yeah. And then you, uh, and you steal, just steal the go techniques. stand behind that back. I'm like, <laughs> I mean, usually I go stand behind Daniel back. Like, yeah, I mean, you know, if as long as you're respectful, people are uh, open yeah. to sharing techniques. Yeah. And when you're at a, a studio together, it's uh, you know, yeah. everyone, yeah, yeah, everyone, everyone will tell you help you out. It helps yeah. the whole whole studio. So. Yeah. And a lot of that is just reference as well. Like, mm -hmm. if I'm working on a new environment. I don't want to start it until I'm blown away or inspired by a particular imagery, you know. So, if you're sitting, if you're sitting there and you want to make a swamp, don't start making that swamp until you've found hundreds of images and you've picked the very most like breathtaking scene <laughs> yeah. ever and translate that. You you don't just want to be like, oh, I think a swamp is kind of got some scraggly trees and 
some brown water, maybe yeah. maybe I'll put some fog. You know, yeah. Yeah. Don't, don't stick to your own knowledge. You know, don't try to expand and try to learn. There's going to be so much subtlety in, in reference. Yep, that's true. Look at a lot of reference, and, and, and as as the time go by, your visual memory will kind of build. You mm -hmm. have like more knowledge, and I think that's how you gain. You kind of like have your box of memory right here, and then if you still keep doing trying to do concept art, you just have that box, but if you go and try to grab some other thing and fill your box, then yeah. you have more layers of, of thought process going mm -hmm. on. And yeah, that's a good point. The, the more uh, variety of out yeah. or input you're taking in from all sources, even just out like real real life experiences yeah. and going hiking and everything, it's yeah. all going to add up to more. Yeah, and take more classes awesome. from better artists, you know, like yeah. your class and some other class. Things like that. There's always class, class everywhere. It doesn't matter if you already graduate from college. Right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. All that. So, and if you were an art director, what would you look for in portfolio? Um, basically, someone that understands the whole environment process and can make a cohesive scene. Mm -hmm. So that's why I, uh, because that's kind of what we've done to reverse engineer some of the assignments. Everything is building towards what I think mm -hmm. the ideal the portfolio would be. Mm -hmm. So rather than building like a handgun and an anime robot and you know all these separate things, put all that effort into one vision mm -hmm. and you know have everything working together. And that's where that reference and, and doing your research about yeah. the company really comes into play. So you have a, just a streamlined laser focus. Yeah, that's a pretty good idea. Make yourself a composer, basically. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Otherwise, you're going to have, even though someone might be technically savvy, you mm -hmm. don't know if they can put together a whole scene, mm -hmm. you know, you don't, unless they show it. So mm -hmm. I think it's really important. And if with the whole scene technique, you can still have the individual assets mm -hmm. and they can be impeccably, impeccably done. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so you get the best yeah. of both worlds. Yeah, and it, I think like when you do that, I think it's inspire each, like we, everything in the scene is kind of inspire each other. It's either you do creature, either you do character, either you do uh, environment or props or lighting mm -hmm. or particles. Um, I think because like if say the scene is in uh, a deep swamp or it's in a high mountain snow, or, then you're gonna have an impact on what the outfit or what the costume they're wearing yeah. like or yeah, what kind exactly. of creature you know if mm -hmm. you're in the cold weather then the creature would be like pretty hairy or you know it can't be like a hairless or something like that so it's kind of go along with the uh, uh, evolution natural process of things and you, it made you think about things a little more when you compose a lot of yeah the the end result will be greater yeah. than the sum of its parts yeah. uh, if it's all cohesive yeah yeah, you're exactly, you know, if, you, if you're doing character stuff as well, mm -hmm. and that character fits in the environment you made, then it just shows me that this person's uh, really focused and serious and, mm -hmm. and isn't kind of scattered all of, yeah. across the board. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's not like you put this guy into here, like, put this creature in that area, it's like, it's, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you can't put a Sheeta in there. Oh, so that, I guess that's pretty much it. Uh, I guess we're going to cut that part, and then thank you to Jason Stokes, and Everyone go visit his channel. Uh, just type in, in Google search, or I'll have a link over here, or Google search or YouTube search Future Poly, and then you'll find either the school or the channel. I think uh, they, they're trying to like update a more consistent video now. So it uh, there's a lot more variety over there uh, than just my channel. My channel is like strictly, you know, pretty much concept art and how to draw sort of thing, but his channel has uh, that also, and include a bunch of variety of things that you can dip your feet on and you know sometime a uh, certain thing will get you into the door not necessarily one or the other thing so you try out different things and you know just try it out and then see if you like it you might end up like it because you know it's art and yeah and some ZBrush usually help you a bunch of artists are using ZBrush to like produce a concept art so it's like 3D is becoming a lot more easier to use nowadays right so yeah that's it yeah, that's a really good point. Um, if you if you like kind of follow CG Hub and sites like that, you'll you might not realize it, but a lot of the, the environment yeah. concepts are incorporating 3D. Uh, and I've been I've been using that. I do some concept work as well. And if if you think about as soon as you're sacrificing your uh, 
your design just because you don't know how to draw a certain thing in perspective if it's like a bunch of concentric ellipses spiraling through space yeah, that's gonna be I'm not, I don't want to draw that you know so using the tool when it's necessary and you can just block that kind of stuff in in 3d as an under under painting and mm -hmm. uh, kind of gray box and then paint right on it mm -hmm. um, and so even even if you're not completely interested in it, environment art, you can still use a lot of the 3D knowledge for concepting. Mm -hmm. And I mean, that's really the direction things are going. Mm -hmm. So it's... Yeah, and creature art yeah. too, like a bunch of creatures yeah. that they sculpt the head. It's like, yeah, oh. ZBrush is just taking over, especially in, in Hollywood, you know, directors just want to see it a uh, concept and they want to see it yeah, rotate, yeah, see it lit, <laughs> try different materials on the fly, you know? Yeah. It's really powerful. Yeah, because it's a lot. It's a lot cheaper for them <clears throat> to see like the sample in there, like you know, concept it, and then somebody just like concept it in ZBrush and just boop, 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 put some color in there and just yeah. rotating around with it like a day. Yes, yeah, and once you get comfortable with ZBrush, it really feels like you're just sketching. Mm -hmm. You know, it feels so similar to painting and sketching. It's a it's an awesome feeling. Yeah, I think we'll try to do a, kind of a ZBrush tutorial. tutorial. That's cool. cool. Yeah, you should. I think a lot of people would be interested because it's, it's a lot easier to use nowadays too. Mm -hmm. So yeah, yeah, I'll be watching. All right. Um, anyways, thanks for watching, and this is theartclasses.com and Jason Stowe from Future Poly. Thanks Go everybody. On. Subscribe to us. And it would be <laughs> awesome. Maybe we'll see you again if you request. Um, right. But there may be more interview coming up. So all right. Goodbye.